On today's show, Airbus has announced plans for a clean sheet single aisle aircraft. The NTSB releases preliminary report detailing errors by Boeing and Spirit Aero Systems. Boeing has warned that deliveries of its 737 MAX aircraft are likely to be delayed due to another non-conformance. Joby Aviation has received its Part 145 Repair Station Certificate from the FAA. Two JetBlue planes make contact with each other, and around 1,000 private planes are expected at Las Vegas for Super Bowl weekend. Hey, pal. Hey, guys. It's happening. Yeah. Another Friday. Living the dream. Yep. That's how we do it. That's how we roll, man. <laughs> But we, yeah, so that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. There's a bit of gin. But before we get into it, uh, I'm going to do my call to action again and just say uh, it's now 72% of the viewers that are watching and listening to these episodes are not subscribed. So please uh, do, Ryan, and us a solid and click that uh, subscribe button. It's a small thing, but it helps our production a massive amount. It allows us to keep up the frequency of the episodes and ultimately uh, will help to give you an improved, more reliable product that you can benefit from. 100%. So we jump into the news. Yeah. So what is about Airbus uh, and their plans for a clean sheet single aisle aircraft? Uh, so what does a clean sheet single aisle aircraft mean to you? Well, uh, we're looking at this, I still thought, well, what are they trying to do? Haven't they just taken over the... Uh, C series and to develop the A220, which is a single aisle mm, aircraft yeah, anyway. But that's still that's still sort of old fashioned. So well, are they going to try and start competing with the Embraer and CRJ gauge aircraft? No, I think this is even one generation further. So Airbus, uh, they are going to call this the next generation single aisle. So it's a real uh, <laughs> well thought out NGSA. As part of its efforts to advance the next generation of aircraft, the French government's committed to providing 300 million euros annually between 224 and 227 to support the development of the NGSA. Airbus is focusing on developing technologies for a more efficient and sustainable aircraft, including hydrogen and zero ECs. That's a uh, new uh, age, bro. Okay, I'm with you now. The company is also courting suppliers to develop and mature new technologies for the NGSA. The specific design and market and target of the NGSA are still being finalized. Airbus aims to reduce fuel consumption by 20 to 25% compared to the uh, 321 Neo. Do you love how every new aircraft that uh, gets developed, the, the fuel efficiency is always being improved by 20 to 25%? Yeah. Like, and, and, it, and is it really ever? Yeah. How close do they actually get to measuring the numbers and achieving that kind of efficiency? Yeah. Yeah. I suppose. Um, What's what's the most modern aircraft flying around at the moment? Really? It would be the A three fifty and the seven eight seven. So, so this is um, this going to be now twenty percent more fuel efficient than an A three fifty? Well, I suppose Airbus haven't really announced any major sort of change. With Boeing are doing that thing, they've got that. Uh, but that MD ninety that they modified. Remember, they're using that very fancy truss. Uh, yes. wing and all that they trying all this stuff so maybe this is simply airbus's way of saying hey we are also uh, doing something and of course you know when it's got to do with saving the environment it yeah. always gets a few little extra likes yeah yeah, yeah. okay that's all bullshit <laughs> 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 That's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, uh, all right. So the NTSB, let's go next story. They have released a uh, preliminary safety report detailing errors by Boeing and Spirit Aero Systems that preceded the failure of the plug exit on the Alaska Airlines MAX 9. The report confirms that defective rivets were delivered by Spirit Aero Systems to Boeing, and when the plug exit was open for repairs, the required retaining bolts were missing. This confirmation follows previous reports by United Airlines and Alaska of loose bolts and components found during inspections. Boeing has stated that it's uh, implementing a comprehensive plan 
to strengthen quality and regain stakeholder confidence. Every time we read these stories, it sounds like it's almost a repeat, but this is a new, this is the next phase now. So it is a new story, came out yesterday, and uh, they're getting a bit tiresome, I think. I almost... Yeah, it's like it's what, like, yeah, they're under so much scrutiny. Yeah, and they almost and I'm they're almost like owning up to everything all the time. They have to, obviously, but I mean, uh, yeah, it's becoming about as entertaining as watching uh, the SAA version two debacle. You know, becoming yeah a thing now. It's 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 stale as fuck, man. And uh, yeah, it's not it's done now. It's done. Like sort your shit out, get the airplane working nicely and serviceable and reliable, and uh, let's crack on from there. Yeah, but there's yeah, you know, I don't I don't I don't know if it's gonna be that straightforward because this is their last chance. Yeah. I mean, just to keep you up to date as well, the court case between so there's a court case between the passengers of that Alaska Airlines flights and Alaska Airlines. A lawyer representing twenty two of those passengers on board has alleged in a lawsuit that passengers previously flying on the same seven three seven Max nine, November seven zero four Alpha Lima reported hearing a whistling sound coming from the vicinity of the door plug. Yeah, right. So yeah. this evidence will be yeah, used. Yeah, that, 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 yeah. That's uh, some clever lawyer that's in the mix. Here. Exactly. all the guys, hey, listen. Okay. Yeah. Did you hear a whistling sound in the back? <laughs> Between the, 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 the engines, the, the lavatory, yeah. your Bose headsets, you heard a whistling sound? <laughs> all right, cool. Yeah. And then uh, on other, just carrying on with Boeing, not, not picking on them. I mean, we, you know, it's in the news. Boeing has warned that deliveries of the MAX are likely to be delayed due to a non-conformance in the fuselages of 50 undelivered jets, the issue which involves rivet holes that may not have been drilled to Boeing's requirements. It's not a flight safety concern, and all 737 MAX planes can continue to operate. Boeing expects to perform rework on the affected aircraft and is committed to delivering perfect airplanes. The MAX program has faced scrutiny, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So perfect airplanes is just just, uh, slightly bigger holes drilled into them. Yeah. Hmm. Holes not... (laughs) (laughs) Let's not talk about holes. Yeah. Joby Aviation. You know why I put this one here? So Joby... Remember, we spoke about Joby quite a bit last year. Of all the the sort of vertical takeoff and landing aircraft in this space, this one seems, according to yours truly, seems to be the most likely to sort of get going. Yeah. So I bought a share in it. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And how's that uh, weathering compared to your buying shares? <laughs> 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 yeah, my fin- financial performance is um is taking a hit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping this uh, Joby is the the next best the thing. rebound. You yeah. know, funny so, that uh, you talk about that. Uh, I was listening to a podcast the other day, and uh, these guys were saying that some of these things that do actually uh, turn into turn something. into something. Yeah, like the Alpha, like, like the, the iPhone phone and the Samsung. That. And uh, it was an interesting podcast. Like. And that's where I see it going with these drones and these uh, EV toll type things. Uh, it's, uh... Yeah, I suppose the, the reason that the, the EV toll side of things is interesting is that it basically allows traveling into inner cities from these sort of, you know, it, it, you go to another country. I mean, you, you take us in South Africa, lots of ways you, we're very spoiled by most of us having cars yeah. and you want to go somewhere, you jump into your car and off you go. You're also, you know, driving home for you and we probably live in one of the, you know, the most, the busiest place, one of the busiest places in, uh, in South Africa. But even if you leave to go home at five o'clock in the afternoon, peak traffic, you know, you can still get lucky, get home within half an hour or, or whatever, but mm. you know, traveling for, you know, when you go to Europe and in the States, if you work in the city and you, you live out the city, that, that whole travel experience every day that you make is a bit of a rigmarole. Yeah. And you've story. got trains, you've got public transport and all that. But if you can add in this uh, EV toll, which is almost like branding it a bit like, uh, 
They're like scar taxis, but yeah. real ones. Yeah. You know, you can jump and boom and go. You wonder how accessible they're going to be to the general public. Is this going to be a thing like only Taylor Swift users? <laughs> or, <laughs> or is it going to be, um, you know, something you can jump on yourself? Are you going to get a pass that you, you can use X amount a week or whatever? I don't know. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how the whole thing plays out. And if you do look at it, I mean, aviation, we, we still, you know, still taking off from the same big runways. The airports are located in far out parts of the cities for most of the time. One of the stories here I'll chat about later, talking about Las Vegas. Las mm-hmm. Vegas is big now. They, they don't have enough space yeah. for, uh, for all these aircraft. And, yeah, you wonder if if maybe EV toll is the answer. The, the, if you do read into it a lot, a lot of it, the negatives come into it. For that vertical takeoff, it requires so much power. Yeah. Um, and obviously, being electric, so much of that is absorbed with that. Uh, <laughs> That's why we're not going to see it. Yeah, it's happening any time soon. <laughs> yeah. But, um, oh, what did, I didn't even watch. There was a state of the nation last night. Yeah, so uh, I was listening to with listening to it with half an ear. Um, <laughs> so funny joke I saw this morning where I can capture wearing a T-shirt and he says we have eleven official languages and Ramaphosa still chooses to talk cuck because <laughs> it all it was just a, uh, a lot of shit. The same old. That crap. I can talk more cuck than us. <laughs> <laughs> Which is saying something. Yeah, careful. This now he starts a podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I just saw that. You know, these there's so much pomp and ceremony going on. Mm. I mean, the whole thing started apparently like in the morning. People arriving, bloody uh, horse carriage, and yeah, I always laugh when our you know our guys are doing the the military sort of what <laughs> military, bro? No, there's no. I mean, yes. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Anyway, oh. back to uh, back to aviation. So we'll keep we'll keep an eye on Joby. Well, I will because it affects my financial <laughs> it affects my financial future. But uh, yeah, uh, a continuation thing. This theme is just carrying on. Why are aircraft pranging into each other on the ground all the time? Yeah, look, it's uh, a bit ridiculous. I mean, it's crazy. There's a two two JetBlue aircraft uh, made contact at Boston. Uh, one wingtip touching another plane's tail. Don't touch me on my studio situation <laughs> there. No one was hurt. Both flights were cancelled. Incident occurred while the planes were on the de-icing pad. FAA is open under investigation. Passengers were moved onto other aircraft. JetBlue confirmed the incident. Yeah, well, but it's happening all the time. It happened in Mozambique the other day. There's two Q400s. <laughs> The only two <laughs> aircraft because in Inambar, no? Yeah, in Inambar, yeah. yeah. Connected. Uh, they also, they, they touch tail feathers and... Um, Those yeah. are Q400s, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, hard, yeah. Look, I can understand it in the States where there's hundreds of aircraft on the bloody apron and taxing all the time. Yeah, in Inambar. But in Inambar, yeah. I think they got about two flights a week. Yeah. And they, they had to collide on the ground. No, it's, it's it's amazing the amount of ground related incidents. I mean, uh, involving aircraft, it's just incredible. We, we've spoken about it quite a bit on the show, uh, and yeah, we've put the blame on Oaks not looking outside and ground mm-hmm. radar on ATC and everything. But um, yes, uh, in the last three years, it's like just yeah, really scaled up. So I didn't realize there's uh, there's quite a lot of technology in this space in the states as well, like. Um, it uses a bit of an algorithm to work out if, you know, particularly uh, going onto the runway. Mm. There was that incident a while ago where the technology actually worked, but the the aircraft, uh, they were through the line of sight of those stop bars. But those stop bars automatically go on yeah. if uh, the AI system predicts that uh, there could be a collision. So there's a lot of this going on. I suppose we'll see more and more of that, but maybe what they need are instead of just having the stop bars on the runway, maybe there needs to be an auto brake function on your airplane. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe have, yeah, <laughs> but uh, maybe they need to, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's obviously, it's obviously becoming more of a fact. There's too many aircraft on the ground, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, carrying on. So we mentioned on, uh, when did we do the pod on Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Yeah. 
Okay. Wednesday. <laughs> All right. Uh, we spoke about the FAA and the proposed increasing the retirement age. So Captain Sully has said uh, it's not a good idea. He argues that there's insufficient data to support the proposal and that there are safety and operational concerns associating with raising the retirement age. Currently, pilots in the U.S. must retire at 65. That's in line with international standards. The proposal to raise the retirement age has been included in the reauthorization bill. So he says negative, Ghost Rider. Those dudes are too old. I was surprised reading it. I really thought he would be one advocating for the increase in, in retirement age. No, he's got too much money now, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care about his mates. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're stuck, yikes. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I, I don't think that would... Look, if the international standard is there, it would be quite difficult for an authority to come in and raise the the age, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mentioned Taylor Swift. So around a 1,000 planes are expected at Las Vegas airports so over the weekend because it's Super Bowl there. That's right. The event attracts a large number of private planes each year. With the previous games seeing hundreds of arrivals, this year the number of planes could match the Las Vegas Grand Prix, which had 927 business jet arrivals. Uh, there was no the reason I'd say Taylor Swift because I think she's dating uh, one of the players. One of the players, yeah. apparently. And she's got a concert on somewhere. Okay, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And she's obviously got a global or a Gulfstream or something. There's no space for her on the uh, on the apron, so she's a bit pissed. Yeah. She's miffed about that. So. She's miffed, yeah. So, she's always she's she is a big uh, football supporter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That's one game I haven't. Uh, no, listen, no, I can't get into that. No, me neither. I think you know the Oaks. You know, how could you watch football after watching like a rugby, rugby game, game no, and then we no. got like Drekus and all our main Oaks that go yeah. out there and do sports with no padding, no shoes. Yeah, I mean these are I got so much kit on. It yeah. looked like you and I on a bike trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, that yeah. that's this weekend. I suppose from an aviation perspective, the the nice thing there is to see all those aircraft. Yeah. I mean Vegas, just the the apron normally got a ton of uh, private jets there. Yeah, I'm sure. So it looks kind of cool. It's like uh, Lanceria on a on a few roids. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Pilot productivity. Going to ask a question here because. A lot of people have let me know. They say, hey, Brian, like the new shorter form, you know, listen to it in the plane coming back from so-and-so. Yeah. Is that, uh, is it accepted now to to listen to something on the aircraft? I mean, I don't know. You and I have only really done sort of regional stuff. So yeah. the longest we used to do was sort of Joburg, Lubombashi or something. But obviously, the guys are doing longer flights these days. And are you? What's the airline's sort of policy on listening to something like a podcast in flight? I'd be yeah. interested to know. Or do the guys just uh, put the little pod in behind the <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and listen? Or I suppose the fancy Bose headsets work because you can, uh, you know. Yeah, exactly. I think most guys and girls are flying around with those bows, A twenties and A thirties now. We don't have, have to say teeth. guys and girls on the you know, you realize we've only got one girl that listens to the show yeah, anyway. True. So all the guys and Caroline. <laughs> 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 no chick is gonna listen to us yap about bullshit up to minute twenty. Hey? Huh? Well. Yeah. Shit, I thought we were bigger than that, man. So no. <laughs> it's funny if when you go the reason I say when you go to our stats, yeah, it it says I think it's ninety nine point nine nine percent male. I think that's largely because of you, to be honest. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, but that's that's yeah. that's the aviation gen I picked up. Yeah, let me know. Uh, send us a comment. Do you listen to the podcast uh, in the air? Yeah, what, what is it that, or do you listen to it in, during the commute? You know, I mean, we're trying to work it out for ourselves because personally, I listen to most of my podcasts while I'm driving to and from work. Yeah, and for me, I'm I'm sort of am preferring doing the shorter form pod. Mm. It seems a bit more direct and it's a bit easier in lots of ways. I think we used to yap a little bit too much. 
Yeah. Not like we haven't no, yapped today. No. I think that's fair. largely because of you. Yeah, definitely because of me. <laughs> There's been a fair amount of yapping today, but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm interested to know: is it is it frowned upon or is it cool? Uh, what you got planned for the weekend, bro? Just gonna take it easy. Uh, spend some time with the kids. Um, nothing major. A little bit of work in between. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And yourself? Uh, yeah, same. I, so I'm doing some instruction on Sunday, early in the morning. Gonna have a bry. In the afternoon on Sunday and uh, catch up on the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> I got my little one's swimming lessons tomorrow. Nice. So, yeah. yeah. Try to get some good family time in. Anyway, it's always yeah. cool doing this. I'm glad we did the pod today. Expect a few more next week. And uh, if you've got anything you want us to chat about, let us know. As always, if you enjoyed the show, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Appreciate you all. Thanks for choosing Brian Air as your aviation podcast of choice. Bye for now. Cheers.